In this tutorial, I'm gonna run through the techniques used in this shawl behind me. This is the Chestnut Hill Shawl by Vanessa Ewing. It is a big, satisfying knit of stripes and lace and all kinds of stuff going on. We can cut away to a picture here. You can see it's a big, generous shawl. It's very fun to knit. This uses uh, Kramer Yarns Perfection Sport, and I've used Perfection Yarns in a lot of tutorials before because I love this yarn. It is a great value, it comes in a bajillion colors, and it is easy care. It knits up like wool, but it's easy care. So even if you knit it for someone who you know is not going to hand wash <laughs> their knits, it's okay if it ends up in the washing machine and the dryer, that's all right. Uh, kits are available for this. If you click the little eye in the upper right hand corner that will take you to my website. I'll also put all the links in the video description field below. And the links that I'll give you are to the, the site on the Kramer website where you can get a kit. And the kit comes with your yarn in your color choice and uh, the pattern. Or you can just go to the Kramer Perfection Sport yarn page and pick your own colors. You know, I've said before, I personally like when experts pick colors for me, but you are allowed to pick your own colors. Just be sure to drop the pattern in your basket as well so that because um, you're building your own kit. Um, I'm going to put this at an advanced beginner level because if you watch the tutorial and you see that the, the things that we establish early on in the shawl are what you continue throughout the rest of the shawl. So if you can get the first little section of the shawl done, you've got the rest of it. This pattern comes with both written and charted instructions, so either will work, um, depending on what you like to read. I'm also going to give a quick knit companion chart setup tutorial, just because if you, if you haven't used that feature a lot, it might seem like a complicated thing. It's quick, quick to set up. <clears throat> um, what else do we have here? Um, kits. Fun knit. <laughs> I think I said all of it. I should mention, it looks like I'm shooting in the middle of the night right now. It is the morning. We are having the rainiest Texas summer ever. And it's thunderstorming outside right now at 10 in the morning. I think it's about 10 in the morning. And uh, so it looks like I'm shooting at night, but I'm not. I'm bright and fresh and awake and it's the morning. So first up, we're going to talk about the first little section of the shawl, which is a stripe section. And then in the last part of the video, we're going to talk about lace reading and working the lace. I've got you covered here. Be sure to click through um, to get your kit to follow along and we'll get started with the stripe section next. Okay, we're ready to get started on this shawl. First, we're gonna give, I'm gonna give you an overview of kind of how the whole thing comes together and the whole thing works, and then we'll dive right in with the, um, the first few rows of the knitting. So let's take a look. Okay, let's first take a look at the, the shawl close up before we look at the bigger picture of the construction. So this is where you start, and we start with the lace section or a, a stripe section, and then we move on into the lace section in just one color. And we have this spine, I'm gonna point it out on the bigger picture, that runs through the entire shawl, and that's a double decrease line. So let's take a look at the, the big picture. This is a shawl completed, it's a photo of a shawl completed by Beth at Kramer Yarns, and I thought it was a pretty picture, I thought I should use this for an example. This is where her shawl starts, over here, and you see the spine that I'm talking about. And we start with the, the stripe section and increasing, and the lace section and increasing, and you will establish kind of the pattern of how things are going to go. It's going to get really, really familiar, and then it's going to change up, because you see how the spine has more stitches on this side and fewer on this side. That event, the, the chart eventually changes and that um, you don't really have to put a lot of thought into it. You just follow the directions and that's how it happens. But it ends up being a really interesting and pretty shawl. Okay, so the first part of the pattern, I need to make some room here. I'm running out of room. Um, the first part of the pattern is written instructions. We're not into the chart yet. And I'm gonna get my yarn and my needles and which you'll have a color A and a color B. And the color A is going to be 
the, the color you're not using in the lace section. So the col color B is your lace section color. So I'm going to start with color A because you saw I'm using the same colors as I did in my shawl. I use this, this blue color for the lace, so I'm saving that for color B. And we start by casting on just five stitches, five little stitches for that whole enormous shawl. And I'm going to use double pointed needles just because it's easier for me to demonstrate over the table like this with DPNs. So we've got five stitches. And this first section, you're really going to want to carefully follow the pattern because it's, <clears throat> you're still figuring out how this whole thing is going to go and things are a little bit different right off the bat. So we cast on five stitches and we start with the wrong side row. The first thing we're going to do is slip the first stitch with the yarn in front. So you put your needle in there as if to purl and slide that stitch over. Then grab your working yarn and pull it back between the two needles. I just pulled it back like that. And then we're going to KFB, which is knit front back, a one stitch increase. So I knit the stitch normally, swing the tip of my needle around to the back loop of the stitch, knit it, pull that stitch off, and then I've made two stitches out of one. And I'll go ahead and put links to all of the stitches that I'm using here. I'll put links to them in the video description field. So I slipped a stitch, I KFB, I'm going to purl one, KFB again, and knit one. So that was row one. Row two, we're sticking with color A, and I'm going to slip the first stitch with the yarn in front. This is something we're going to do every row on the first stitch. Slip that stitch with the yarn in front, grab it, and then pull it back between the two needles because our next stitch is always a knit front back. Um, slip one with yarn in front, knit front back, slip two, knit one, PSSO. Okay, remember that spine that we saw? Now we're going to start the first of those double decreases that's going to create that spine. And to do this double stitch, this double decrease, you'll put your needle in to two stitches this time and slip them over, and then knit the next stitch, and then take the tip of your left needle and put it into those two stitches that you slipped create some tension on the working yarn and pull those two stitches over, essentially binding them off. And now here on row two, we want to bring in a stitch marker because that's going to be, that's going to mark our center spine stitch from here on out. Um, and now I'm going to KFB and knit one. Okay, turn the work. We're on a right side row again. Oops, no, we're on a wrong side row this time. Slip the first stitch with the yarn in front. Pull the yarn to the back. And KFB, of course. Knit one. Slip the marker. And now we're going to slip our double decrease stitch. We're going to pull the yarn in front, slip it, put the yarn back, knit one, KFB, knit one. Okay, the reason that we're slipping that stitch, let me pull this back in here. The reason we're slipping that stitch on the wrong side is so that our double decrease doesn't have, I mean, it, it just looks really tidy because the stitch is slipped um, with the working yarn on this side. So it keeps that line really pretty. Okay. Row four, we're switching to the next color, to color A. I know I had my yarn end ready for me. Okay, here we go. First, I'm going to slip the first stitch, 
in the old color, right? This is how I do this. I put my needle in, I grab the new yarn that I'm attaching, and leave myself a tail to weave in later. Get that around the back needle and pull it through, but don't finish that stitch because remember the first stitch or the, the next, this stitch is a KFB. Swing the tip of my needle around to the back loop of that stitch, drop the tail end, wrap it and pull it through, and we're attached. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> and now um, I'm going to knit to two stitches before the marker. This is row four. And that happens to be knitting one stitch because now I'm two stitches before the marker. And this is the first time that we're coming to the double decrease with the marker already in place. I'm going to slip those two stitches to the right needle, remove the marker, knit that next stitch, grab those two stitches that I slipped and essentially bind them off over the knit stitch and put the marker back because we need to remember where that double decrease is. And now the pattern says to knit to last two stitches, which means in this case, just knitting one stitch and then KFB and knit one. Okay, this row, that row that we just finished is how things are going to look from here on out. So I don't really have a whole lot more to teach you. Let's see, on the wrong side, I'm going to slip the first stitch with yarn in front, pull my yarn to the back, KFB, knit to the marker, slip the marker, pull the yarn in front, slip that stitch, pull the yarn in back, knit to last two stitches, KFB, and knit one. Okay, now we have both colors attached. We have established what the, the it doesn't look like much right now, but <laughs> we've established what kind of the pattern is gonna be from here on out. So the next, um, let me just double check my pattern here. I'm going to repeat these last two rows, but with color A. So to switch colors, the reason we're slipping the first stitch, let me pull my finished shawl in here. It gives us a really nice edge if we slip that with the yarn in front every time. The edge looks really good. So I'll slip this with the yarn in front. Well, all the yarns are hanging there in front right now. Grab the color that I want to use and pull it back between the two needles. KFB. Knit to two stitches before the marker. And right now it's pretty short. <laughs> as, the, as the shawl gets wider and wider, there are more and more stitches just to knit before you get two stitches before the marker. Slip those two, remove the marker, knit, decrease those, replace the marker. Knit to two stitches before the end, KFB, knit one. <coughs> Excuse me. And now the wrong side row, slip one, KFB, knit to marker, Slip the marker, yarn forward, slip that stitch, yarn back, knit to last two stitches, KFB, knit one. Okay, we'll do that one more time with color B again. A couple more things I want to show you. It's actually starting to look like something now. Look at that. Okay. Slip this first stitch, grab the color I want to use, and pull it back between the two needles. Now something I want to say, this, this KFB that you work right after you slip that first stitch, it is going to tighten up the, the last knit stitch that you did in this color. You see what I'm saying? You ha we haven't used this color for a while. It's way back here. 
don't pull that stitch like crazy tight because you don't want to get a really tight edge. So when you work this KFB, just kind of keep it, don't, don't, pull, don't pull too tightly to tighten up that stitch. Just let it kind of be a little bit loose because it's just going to keep your edge from, um, from getting too tight. It won't look sloppy if you leave it a little loose. It'll just keep the edge from getting too tight. Knit up to two stitches before the marker. Slip two, remove marker, knit one, pull those two over, replace the marker. Don't forget to replace the marker. I do a bad thing and I usually put it in my mouth. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to do that. KFB, knit one, and another wrong side row. Slip, pull the yarn to the back, KFB, knit to marker, slip that, yarn forward, slip the stitch, yarn back, knit to two stitches before the end of the row, KFB, and knit one. And look at that. And you're just going to follow the pattern because really those two rows have established what you're going to keep doing for this, for this section. It's all spelled out for you. Okay, you're just gonna keep following the row by row instructions for the first little stripe section. And next up, we're going to dive into the lace. Okay, if you're finished with the stripe section, you are ready to dive into the lace. In this section, we're gonna talk about lifelines and reading the chart. And really, once you get the first few row uh, rows of the lace chart done, you are set. The rest of this pattern is gonna be a breeze. But first, let's take a look at the chart. Okay, when you finish your first striped section, this is what it will look like. It looks very good. And now that I have it on the, the circular needles, you, it's taking its own shape and it looks really good. And right here, right now, we are ready to get started with the lace section. But before we go any further, I want to make sure that you understand about lifelines because especially if you're new to lace, you might be nervous about starting the lace section, might be nervous about messing up. And it isn't easy to pick up stitches in lace if you've made a mistake. So the best thing to do, it only takes, it only takes a minute, is to take some thin yarn. I use this cotton thin yarn, kind of crochet thread. Um, and I'm going to work a proactive lifeline, which means I'm going to slide <clears throat> all of my stitches to the cord. And I'm going to run the needle through all of the stitches. And what this does, you can work this anywhere in the, in the any pattern really, in this shawl also, <laughs> is you run it through there and then if you, going forward, if you do make a mistake, when you rip back, all of the stitches are safely held on this scrap yarn and it's, n it's not a problem to get them back on the needle. You don't have to worry about stitches dropping or unraveling further. Or you don't know what row you're on. Just make sure not to include the stitch marker. Go around the stitch marker. Actually, I'm not gonna finish this. You don't have to watch me finish it. You pull it through all of the stitches and you just leave it there and you work, you just work the rest of your pattern like it's not there, no problem. So that's, uh, that is a nice safety measure. It only takes a minute to do and it will save you a lot of headache if you need it. It's kind of like buying insurance, you know? <laughs> Sometimes people buy insurance just to make sure they don't ever need it. That's kind of what it's like. 
So um, once that's in there, if you want to continue to put in lifelines, you might want to put in a lifeline after working like row eight of the lace pattern chart each time. And it's just there for, for safe, safekeeping, safety measures. All right, let's look at the chart. And I'm actually going to be using my iPad, but I have the lace chart A here. This is the first chart that you'll be working. And I want to talk about how the lace chart works. And um, I'm going to pull up my key because I didn't print out the key. Here we go. OK. Um, if you're new to working charts, the way that most charts are written is at the right side. When you're reading a right side row, you read it from right to left, and wrong side rows are left to right. It's when you're knitting a flat piece. That's how most charts go. And this chart makes it really easy because right side rows, like row one here, uh, the number one is over here. And then the wrong side row, all of the even numbers are over here. So it helps to remember which side. And you'll see in this chart that Row one is all full of symbols, and row five is all full of symbols. So the lace chart looks pretty complicated, but really it's only rows one and five that really have you doing anything except just plain knitting and purling. So, and KFB, and slipping stitches. But you're used to that by now. By the time you get finished with that stripe section, you are used to the construction of how these, how it works. And so the lace is just kind of one more thing that you can easily take on. So let's talk about what the stitches are and how, but I mean, we're actually going to work a couple of rows here, but let's talk about how this works. This first symbol, this first symbol here is slipping one with yarn in front. We're very familiar with it. I bet you can guess what this one is. It's KFB. This is standard in a lot of charts. It is in knit two together. And then yarn over, purl, yarn over, and let me double check. Slip one, knit two together, pass slip stitch over, a double decrease. And you see this red box around this section? This is a repeat. That means you're going to complete up to here and go back to the first stitch, complete up to here, go back to the first stitch. And you, um, in the first row, the first time you work this, I can tell you, you'll repeat it four times. But it's pretty easy to see, you know, as, as the chart gets wider, you're gonna repeat, be, be repeating this section more and more. But it's easy enough to see that um, here's the center double decrease. When you only have this many stitches left, which in this case is going to be three, a purl and a decrease, and then actually five, you'll need two stitches before the marker for this one. But we'll get there. We'll look at this in, in, in real life. Right now we're just talking about the chart. That will help you um, recognize how many times to work the repeat, but it's pretty clear. So you work the repeat, work the repeat four times, yarn over, purl one, yarn over, SSK, this is um, another standard in charts because it's a left-leaning decrease. This is the double decrease we've been working for the spine all along. Knit two together, yarn over, purl, yarn over. And here's our uh, repeat again, the red box all the way through the chart. That is our repeat for these stitches. A double decrease, yarn over, purl one, yarn over, SSK, KFB, and then an empty box, it's the first time we've seen an empty box in the chart, is a knit one. And then you turn the work, and then we read the chart this way. And uh, something, if, if you're new to lace charts, don't let this confuse you. But for instance, this empty box is a knit on the right side and a purl on the wrong side. And it's all clearly explained in the legend. So this is slip one. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, all this rain is... Uh, bringing up all the pollen outside. This is a slip one with yarn in front, KFB. And since we're on the wrong side of the work, it's purl, purl, purl. This is a knit now because we're on the wrong side of the work. Purl, 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 knit, purl, purl. There's our slip stitch. Purl, purl, knit, purl, 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 knit, purl, 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 KFB knit. <laughs> I had to think about it for a minute, but it's a dot. It's a pearl. But once you, um, once you start working it, you kind of see the stitch as this three-dimensional thing. So it's a, it's a, what's a pearl on this side is a knit on this side, even though it's the same symbol. Now, all of this said, you have the option of 
uh, working through the written instructions instead of the charted instructions. But for those of us who um, are using the chart and we're also using Knit Companion on our iPad with Setup and Essentials, I want to give you a quick reminder of setting up charts in Knit Companion because if you don't do it all the time, it might seem like a complicated thing to do, but it is not. So here's my lace chart A and my key. I'm going to hit setup, the plus key over here, chart piece. And what I want is on page six. And it's telling me to highlight what I want. I want that. And I will tighten it up a little bit here and then hit the magic, the magic wand button. And yes, it recognized it perfectly. So I'll tap crop. Maybe. Okay. And so there's my chart and I'll, I'll show you how this is all going to look in a minute. I also want to have the key available to me. This you'll, in my knit companion, um, videos, a lot of times I talk about making the perfect pattern page and that's what I'm going to work on right now. I'm going to tap the plus and make a new key. And what I want is page six. I'll highlight the key and I'll go ahead and tighten it up and crop it. Okay. Now when I go to knit, I have you get everything resized the way I want it. I have the perfect pattern page because I have my chart and my key all here and it's all set up with one tap markers so that the row that I'm on is always highlighted. Okay, that was your quick, quick knit companion, knit companion tutorial. And now we're actually going to work through, I'll pull the paper chart back in. We're going to work through the chart. I want to make sure that you're seeing what I'm seeing and not just seeing my balls of yarn there. Okay. First, I'm going to slip the first stitch and we've done this a million times already. Slip the first stitch with the yarns in front and I'm going to be using the red color this time. So I will pull that yarn back between the two needles and KFB. And now I have a knit two together. Yarn over, purl one, yarn over is next. Okay. So I'm going to yarn over. And that, it, that really just means pulling the yarn forward between the two needles at this point. But the next stitch is a purl one. So I kind of yarn forward so it makes it almost like a double yarn over. Purl one, and I'm going to yarn over again. But since my working yarn's in front, it just kind of flops over the needle like this. And I'm going to work my, um, my, my decrease. Let me, get, let me make sure I get this decrease right because there are two ones. Okay two decreases. This symbol here is a slip one, knit two together, PSSO, pass slip stitch over. Now we're going to work this, um, this repeat section a few times so we can get comfortable with it. Yarn over, purl one, yarn over, and the second yarn over is just kind of keeping the yarn in front while I work the slip one, knit two together, pass that slip stitch over. Yarn over, purl one, yarn over, slip one, knit two together, PSSO. Now I am ready. That was, those were all the repeats I was going to work. Did I say it was four? That seemed like three. That was three. Okay. Oh, I have uh, more stitches to work here. Yarn over, purl one, yarn over. That's why I thought it was four because it's the same thing. Yarn over, purl one, yarn over. Yarn over, purl one, 
yarn over, and now an SSK, slip a zip to knit, slip a zip to knit, knit those two stitches together without splitting the stitch. There we go. And now I'm two stitches from the marker. We already know what happens two stitches from the marker. We slip those two, remove the marker, knit one, pass those two stitches over, replace the marker. Isn't it nice that you got so familiar with all of that before? Now it's knit two together, yarn over, purl one yarn over. Knit two together, yarn over, purl one, yarn over. And now I'm into the repeat section, which is slip one, knit two together, PSSO, this double decrease, uh, yarn over, uh, purl one, yarn over. <laughs> slip one, knit two together, PSSO, yarn over, purl one, yarn over. Slip one, knit two together, PSSO, yarn over, purl one, yarn over. Slip one, knit two together, PSSO, yarn over, purl one, yarn over. Now these last four stitches, I'm going to SSK, slip, slip, knit, and now KFB, so a decrease and an increase right next to each other, and knit one. And after you finish the first row of any lace section, you have established the lace section. It becomes pretty easy to make sure that you're on track, and I'm gonna talk about how to do that. Okay, now on row two, remember we start over here, and I'm going to slip one with yarn in front, as always, and then KFB, whoops, as always. And now this section is, um, we were working garter stitch before, this is more stockinettes, there are more purls on the wrong side. So I have purl, purl, and then my repeat is purl, knit, purl, purl. And I want to talk about something that is going to be, <clears throat> it's going to help you a lot. Okay. Pearl, knit, pearl, pearl in the re, in the re, uh, the repeat section. The first pearl, you notice it's right over, uh, yarn over. And then we have the, the knit and the second pearl is right over a yarn over. So let's take a look at what that looks like. See the stitch here? That's obviously a yarn over. It's just kind of flopped over the needle, right? So purl, knit, look at there's another yarn over, purl, purl. I know I'm on track because this should be into a yarn over, this is not, purl, purl. By looking at what the stitches were in the previous row, it helps you know that you're on track in your current row. And now I'm down to the last few stitches and it's purl, knit, purl, purl. And then here is our slip the marker and slip that stitch with yarn in front. Then we have purl, purl, knit, purl. And then let's take a look at this one <clears throat> so I can make sure I'm, I'm on track. Pearl, pearl, knit, pearl. The second and the last pearl of that repeat should be into yarn over stitches, right? I can look at the row below to know if I'm on track here. So pearl, pearl, knit, pearl. Can we slow that down? The first one, the second one should be into a yarn over. Sure is. Third one is not, or the knit stitch is not. 
and the last purl should be into a yarn over. Right on track. And the last few stitches are purl, purl, KFB, knit. You know something I didn't tell you? <laughs> when you um, switch to the lace section, you can, uh, you can cut the other color and just set it aside. You don't have to have two balls of yarn flopping around like I just did. It wasn't that much in the way, but <clears throat> I didn't have to have it on there. So that is how we have the lace established now. Rows three and four are going to be just as easy as that wrong side row that we, we, we just did. And then in five, we have another row with yarn overs and everything else. And like I said, that only happens in rows one and five. But you can see it's not so hard reading the lace pattern. You can do it. And you always have the written instructions if, um, if reading the chart makes you nervous. And that's it. That's it for the whole shawl. You have now seen all of the techniques used in this shawl and you can do it. Uh, many thanks to Kramer Yarns for sponsoring this tutorial. I had such a nice time knitting this shawl. I really don't do very many triangle scarves, but uh, triangle shawls. I loved this one. It was such great fun. Also, many thanks to Vanessa Ewing for designing such a great pattern. I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. Good luck.